Welcome to Berkeley Middle East. Today we are going to discuss CMA Unit 4 Part 2 and the unit name is Investment Risk and Portfolio Management. Broadly we are going to discuss two major things. One is risk and return. The other is managing financial risk. In this unit we are going to identify certain type of risk which every uh, business uh, uh, is associated with what is the relation between the risk and the return and then we, uh, the first step is to know about different type of risk then we will have a risk management procedure we will identify the risk we will try to understand that uh, what are the risk attitude risk appetite how people take the risk and what are the certain features how we can control and mitigate or uh, avoid the risk uh, to uh, make our business more successful we'll start with the rate of return first of all we should know what is the return the return is any compensation which is we receive for any amount invested generally in equation term it could be return on investment is equal to amount invested minus amount received and uh, uh, we can take it in the rate form as well if you divide the return on investment uh, with the return the amount invested we will get the rate of return then there are some types of the risk associated with every business as there are certain risks associated with the human itself when you come on the road you have uh, an accident risk so same way a business has a risk one is the systematic risk one is unsystematic risk systematic risk is like a market risk that because of the market conditions change in the economic structure or some recession or some industry shift you might be uh, losing your business and uh, it will be a fear for you and uh, when we talk about unsystematic it's like a company risk it's, it's, it's like a default risk that your strength your customer your customer loyalty your internal structure is not so strong enough to uh, the the uh, to survive with the business uh, entity and the business sustenance will be on question then we have credit risk credit risk is a risk which we might have because of not paying our obligations and then foreign exchange risk is when you are dealing with different currencies surely uh, the currency fluctuates so if you calculate something on the lower rate and the market shift and the interest rate increases so might be you, you can experience uh, a huge amount of currency loss same way as the interest rates uh, interest rates generally varies uh, if it is a floating rate and uh, on basis of flo floating rates you can expect something like this that uh, if your calculation is based on 13 percent and because of the market shift or the central bank policies if the rate changes like uh, 18 or 19 percent so it is going to create a massive impact on your financial figures then industry risk is also associated the industry in which your firm is operating itself become obsolete or anything can happen to the industry itself which can cause your business a failure so always there is a risk for your industry certain kind of general risk like economical political technological risk are there the government policies are not stable it will change uh, this year they are promoting information technology next year a new president comes he, he uh, start uh, focusing on other issues so might be because of the political shift or they impose certain taxes or uh, they impose certain custom duties which make your cost of operations expensive reduce your profitability liquidity risk is nowadays every uh, the money market is suffering from this risk that uh, the cash crunch is there and uh, you will not have the uh, uh, you will lose your ability in terms of paying your short term debts and in uh, your short term obligations and uh, your company having no cash to meet the working capital requirement these 
uh, this is uh, the liquidity uh, risk. Opposite to this, we have a gearing risk that is uh, the part of financial leverage, means in the long run, uh, the ability to pay the long term debts and obligations will be a question. Then, uh, generally, uh, they, there are three type of investors we have in the uh, in either broadly we classify three kind of investor. One is they like to take the risk. Some is they don't want to take the risk. They are conservative. Opposite to this, they, they are aggressive. And in between, there are more trades. Now, these are the three different attitude. Risk seekers, risk averser means those who don't want risk. And in between, there are more trades who just want to have a secure income with a little risk. The risk neutral uh, investor adopts an expected value approach. Uh, he is based, he based his calculation on the expected uh, values and expected returns and he keeps probability in his mind that uh, for this particular investor investment he, he is hoping for 70 percent of uh, he is sure that he will get this kind of results and uh, 70 to 80 percent he is uh, sure that uh, his his thinking the way he is perceiving the return from the investment he will secure so he will multiply his total amount in, in, in with the probability that is based on the market evaluation his feelings or on any certain criterions uh, and in the last we have risk seeking investor who are optimistic uh, who have an optimistic attitude they are very much bright and prosperous about any investment which is they are going to take place and for as a compensation of his high risk they are expecting something very good out of it surely higher the risk higher the return now we will continue our discussion about the financial instruments there are certain types of financial instruments uh, we can see that some instruments are backed by government or government department or government assurance is on, on, on the back of the instrument. So they are secure, they are considered more secured. And surely uh, there is some mortgage behind or some assurity is there based on that we have a listing of the financial uh, instruments. Financial managers may select a range of instrument which is given uh, here because uh, in order to make your short term profits you surely want to invest in the money market in the, in the financial instruments what are the options you have us treasury bonds which are issued by the us government they are more secured because this is assured by the government itself then first the mortgage bond these bonds are issued uh, when there is some collateral is there so this is again the most secured form of the uh, investment then we have a second mortgage the thing which is already mortgage has an option for a second mortgage this is less secure than the first mortgage and uh, then we have subordinated debentures income bonds uh, preferred bonds and we have junk bonds, convertible preference uh, stock and the common stock itself. Now, uh, as an investor, surely if you are risk neutral, you are going to calculate your expected value, which is easy to calculate in a sense that whatever amount you are expecting, you have to calculate, you have to multiply with the probability itself. Generally, uh, what, how the probability comes is is uh, require a lot of uh, uh, technical and uh, so you can say a reliable information and uh, uh, suppose if we assume that tomorrow what is the probability for the rain so we can assume that it's 50 50 chances but if today there are uh, more clouds and uh, according to the weather forecast tomorrow we are expecting the rain surely our probability to predict will enhance by using the uh, knowledge instrument and technical uh, information same way investor uh, use certain informations to predict the probability of uh, certain uh, investment now 
and it's a simple question expected rate of return is equal to possible rate of return into probability what is that this is the one stock this is another stock x stock and y stock if you say this is a if you see here rate of return is this much probability is given for this we have 10 percent chances for this this 40 percent chances and for here is 10 percent chances you have to multiply the rate of return with your uh, probability you will get the weighted average and you have to total this one it will give you the accumulated expected value same way you have to see the y it is rate of return is given here then you have to multiply with the probability you will get the weighted average results and the total would be the expected rate of return you can see here the here we have 0.75 percent this is 1.05 percent so based on the analysis we can conclude that the y stock is the is the sounder investment because it has high expected rate of return then uh, the concept for the investor uh, we use in the statistical technique as standard deviation before I discuss how to calculate we should be very clear that what is the meaning of standard deviation standard is uh, something that we de define uh, well in advance before going for some investment that this is 10% we are expecting now deviation is is uh, derived from means a difference of what we think and what we achieve as a logic the greater the standard deviation the bigger the problem is for you and the fewer the devi deviation means the things are in your control that's why as an investor it's very important to see the deviations and uh, we use the concept of standard deviation into it the scale of this is called variance now standard deviation is scale root uh, of smission variance into probability this formula we are going to use then there are two stocks with us stock x and stock y this is the rate of return then we have expected rate then surely this is the variance we can take the scale of the variance it will give you this answer probability is already with you you multiply with it this will give you weighted square variance and then same way you have to calculate the total this will be the accumulated weighted square variance same way you can calculate for the y and if you compare these two this is 40 this is 77 so here the weighted square variance is more than this x then we can take the standard deviation of this one the, the results that we achieve here this is 40 this is 77 if you take the standard deviation is 6.3 and the other is 8.8 .8. so based on these deviation you can see that why investment has more deviation so based on this deviation uh, and every investor is going to rely on x because x has less uh, standard deviation